definitely retail. Uh, we we tend to lean towards like the the the, big, the larger box retailers. So, um, you know, recently, you know, recently we were working with uh with with Best Buy. Um, we you know we so like you know retailers like such as them. Um, on an international standpoint, we you know we were working with uh, a large gro grocery chain called Ahold as well. Uh, we still we still are working with them, and they're pretty much you know they're they're across that 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 area over there. Like you know to they're like you know kind of like what Kroger is you know in the United States basically. This this is a very prevalent. They're all they're all across. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write for Me where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey everybody, this is Max Tidbin with Right For Me and you're listening to the Business Ninjas podcast where we meet experts who are scaling their businesses. And today we're talking about NeoGrid with Maurice Profit, who's the International Marketing Project Manager at NeoGrid. Maurice, thank you for joining us today. Max, how are you, man? It's great to be here. Good, yes, I'm doing really well and uh, good to see you again and excited to jump in and talk a little bit about, about you and, and the company and NeoGrid. And, you know, kind of before we, we actually get into things, uh, let's talk a little bit about your role at NeoGrid. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet with you and kind of get to know you, but let's just start off with, with you telling listeners a little bit about yourself. Sure, absolutely. So my name is Maurice Prophet. Um, I've been with NeoGrid since uh, July of 2014. So uh, looking at about like uh, be about like eight, nine years this year, uh, we're, we're we're creeping up on. Um, I've been uh, working with the marketing team since 2020, actually a, a little probably about a couple of weeks after the pandemic hit. Before that, uh, I was working more so with the uh, the sor our sourcing team. Um, in terms of like just kind of giving them support and also uh, working on some um, some some of the events that we had, the online events that we had through <clears throat> through the uh, through the department. Um, and yeah, now I'm with marketing. Uh, I do the international marketing of uh, NeoGrid, and what that means is that uh, since NeoGrid is based in Brazil, is a Brazilian-based company, um, the the marketing concentration outside of Brazil, which would be in our case the United States and also Europe, um, that's that's more on the international side of, uh, of, uh, of, of the business. And, and when it comes to that marketing, that's something that I work, I work, uh, diligently with, uh, with the, the company. So, so yeah. Well, yeah, you have such an interesting background kind of getting to know you, you, you've been like writer director in some local theaters there in Chicago, yeah. you've been a, a sports writer in the past before, and now you've been spending some time in international marketing, right? Such an interesting journey. Uh, I, like what, what brought you to like NeoGrid? Like, you know, from what you were doing before to where you are now? Well, um, I, ne I need to pay bills. I need to make money <laughs> at the time. Yeah, um, so uh, just, a little, just a little bit of extension about myself uh, in general. I still I still do uh, take part in uh, writing, directing and producing theater and filmmaking and television. And so, um, but at that, at that time though, in 2014, you know, we, I was in a, I was in a very, uh, I was in a, I was in a, a, low, a low place when it came to, when it came to, um, um, consistent work, uh, and artistically. So I needed to actually like, you know, find some, some work to get half consistently so way I could pay bills and, and it had insurance and all that good stuff and everything. And Neil Grid was, uh, you know, was what we brought, brought me on board from a more of an entry level standpoint and be able, I was able to work, really work my way up. Uh, like I said, I was a little more entry level when it came to just like, you know, inputting data and information into, uh, in, into our database and then working along with the, sor the sourcing team when it came to helping facilitate events, uh, to marketing where we are right now. And what's great is that like, you no, know, it's, it all kind of like, it's, it's a process that all kind of, kind of connects together where one thing kind of connects to the other to get you to the next step. And the next thing kind of connects to the next other things to get you to the next step. And, um, and, and yeah, and so, uh, so, so being involved with marketing really uh was a perfect fit because i was already essentially doing that when it came to my own personal projects so yeah just really in, it's something i could kind of take from both ends and apply it to the other and you know see both uh lanes uh excel yeah i i, I can totally uh, relate to that and uh we all go through ups and downs for sure some mm -hmm. people have it tougher than others um and but all those Ups and downs get you to, to where you are today, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we wouldn't be there without those experiences, whether they were good or bad, right? Uh, that's real. That's character. That's character building. That's so true. Yeah. You can't yeah. buy that anywhere. Um, 
Transitioning just just a little bit to the organization, and I, I don't mean to put you on the spot like this, but we've all imagined pitching ideas on Shark Tank, or at least I'd have. Um, <laughs> well, man, but we're being or being the sharks ourselves. So yeah. <laughs> I'd love to if you could give me uh, Neo Grid's elevator pitch, and you know what what does you know Neo Grid solve for your customers? Okay, so I'm so I'm acting like I'm standing in front of Mr. Wonderful right now. So if I start like you know like kind of quivering in my shoes, you know you'll understand why the reason. <laughs> uh, but no, but in terms of uh, in terms of selling the company, so basically let's 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 say for example, what's coming up uh, soon next week? Valentine's Day is coming up next week, right? Um, and as we know, like this is the first like high level co uh, consumer spending magnet of the year that takes place every year. You know, we have that break in between uh, Christmas and, and Valentine's Day where, you know, like you're able to kind of get your funds up a little bit more after like, you know, recovering from Christmas, Valentine's Day is here. Now you're able to spend that money. So the thing is also take into account that as of right now, we're a couple of years removed from the from the pandemic, from the heart of the pandemic. And people are now, as we as we see the numbers that we see on CNBC every 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 day. That you know, spending has you know still is 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 becoming stronger and stronger as we as we continue along, and since the last couple of years have been kind of like a wild card when it comes to consumer spending, uh, you know, if you are a business owner and you are or you're a GM, whatever may have you, and you're seeing that spending's coming back, where you know we're we're kind of going back to the the, the way we were back pre-pandemic. But people are still like, you know, are still uneasy with things. So how do I make sure that my that, that my products on the on the on the shelves are priced accurately, are priced correctly? Like, what's what should I spend? Like, you know, I got to take things things into, into consideration. There's e-commerce that's happening right now. There's like, you know, we're, we're coming out of a pandemic. There's also um, inflation that's going on as well too. So there's a lot of these variables that kind of that really play a role. If you to determine if you're going to be able to move those chocolate heart, those those heart shaped boxes of chocolate up off your shelf. So that's where we come into play. We come into play because that's where we can show you the, the, the types of software, the types of in house, in house homemade software that we have with a very sophisticated AI to let you know this is what you need to price your product based off of race off of all of, his, of historical information data based off of what's going on in terms of the marketplace, based off of consumer spending that's happening as of this date right now, based off of these uh, and other factors that I have not mentioned, but based on these factors, this is what you need to price those items. So this way you can make sure you have enough, uh, you have enough products in the store, number one, and number two, that you are getting the most for, you're getting the most for your, um, for, for your, for your, um, for your rate that you, you set. So we really ensure that the the customers that work with us get as close to accurate as possible when it comes to pricing, especially with is 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 more essential because we're coming off a um a post pandemic um experience, so yeah. it's really critical right now. Gotcha. That's that's super helpful. I mean, I feel like that would be really helpful for me when I go to the grocery store to buy eggs and making sure I'm getting. <laughs> Thank you, especially with the egg situation right now. Right. Exactly. How do you how do you make profit while still still staying competitive at the same really? time? Yeah, no, exactly, especially with that. So it sounds like retail is a big vertical for you. What are the top like verticals that you guys service? Definitely, yeah, definitely retail. Uh, we we tend to lean towards like the the the, the larger box retailers. So, um, you know, recently, you know, recently we were working with uh with with Best Buy. Um, we you know we so like you know retailers like such as them. Um, on an international standpoint, we, you know, we were working with a, a large grocery, grocery chain called Ahold as well. Uh, we still, we still are working with them and they're pretty much, you know, they're, they're across that, 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 the area over there, like, you know, to their, like, you know, kind of like what Kroger is, you know, in the United States, basically this, this is a very prevalent, they're all, they're all across. So we work with, so we work with, uh, retailers on that size, but at the same time, we also work with like smaller smaller chains as well too like you know your dollar trees or when toys r us was here like toys r us as well too smart and fine on the west coast so we you know we work with the smaller ones at um as well because you know whether you are just a a, a small mom and pop neighborhood business or if you are you know uh, a a a hold or a target or a best buy whatever we have you you still have to price properly so we don't leave anyone um, on the dust in terms of like, you no, know, someone that we can't service. You know, we make sure that we uh, we, we hit all areas. 
So are you working with the individual brands as well themselves, or is it just going to be like the retailers who have those products on their shelves? It's more so the retailers that have those products on their shelves. Um, you know, like we, like the, depending on like what sector of the, or what sector of like the, um, the program that they're using, there may be some communication with the actual, with the, with the, with the actual brand might be like, like maybe some, like some software questions or whatever may have you or some issues like that, that just need to be addressed. Uh, but for the most part, though, when it comes to actually like, you know, doing business and closing the deals that we work with the retailers. Okay. So like, who would that target audience be? Like who, what types of roles do you want, like your sales team talking to, to grow the organization? You know, really, you know, the, just you know, the head decision makers. And, you know, because earlier I mentioned that we work with a variety of different size of, uh, of, mm -hmm. of customers and clientele, um, you know, you could be, you could be talking to the, you know, the, the head of sales at, at, you know, at one company, or you'd be talking to, you know, someone who does customer service in another, in, in another company. Just depending on who makes this, who's the, the the prime decision maker, uh, when who's who's qualified enough to be able to talk numbers, to be able to talk about, um, you know, what the options are, whomever is qualified in, in that level to be able to speak about this is way we can move forward in that in a more um in a more appropriate way. So, um, so yeah, it could really be anyone who really does know the business. We don't like limit ourselves to all. We know we only have to talk to the uh, the, the head of sales. Not necessarily at all. If you know how, to, if you know what's what's best for your business and your company, we definitely want to talk to you as well too. No matter what your title is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it seems pretty broad of an ideal customer um, that you know at those organizations could be someone in sales, someone in procurement, maybe marketing, product teams. I assume are even even fits for you guys. Okay. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. And I think what's what what's what's great about that too as well is Wi Fi Wi Fi is very impressive. It really does give like it, it shows that we really are open to, you know, it's you know to to anyone. You know, we really are not closed minded where we said no, we we know we can't speak with you. If you really are like, you know, behind your brand in terms of uh understanding it and knowing what's best. And let's say that you may not be the final decision maker, but however, you know how to, you know, be able to like, you know, relay this information over to your team to make a final decision. You know, that's what really makes things stand out because you think about it, you know, we're, we're a global, you know, we are a global company. So we, we work with a variety of different, uh, different countries and continents as well too. So the home you're speaking with. Um, let's say like, you know, if someone from, if someone from Brazil is speaking with someone in Amsterdam, um, you know, like, and the per their connection in Amsterdam with the, with this company, they do understand Portuguese or wh whatever may have you. So because they are having a, a conversation and communication, that person from Amsterdam can relay that to whomever is that makes the decisions. And then they'll be able to like, you know, go from there. But that's what I'm saying though. It's like, you know, we show that we show how eclectic we are when it comes to being able to be, um, mindful and aware that, you know, that what's really important is what's being delivered to you. And, and the bottom line is really is, uh, is, is great service. And we want to make sure that, you know, any, that, that translates, translates to anybody in any language. Yeah. That, that sounds like a, a nice strategy for sure. When it's, you're trying to stand out uh, against the competition for, you know, for you guys. And I, I always love to like, you know, kind of be a, uh, a novice here from like the outside looking in. And thinking about you know how a company makes revenue and i do think it's always kind of hard to tell from the outside looking in like i mean unless you're like a bank okay i'm collecting fees right um we're opening up accounts but like for you you know how how is your organization generating revenue sure so you know it's with it's with the contracts that we have with these with these companies with our customers um in these contracts you know they they all kind of vary you know they could be like a three month like a, like a three month run or a six month run or even a 12 month run and then those contracts get renewed. So uh, based off of what level or what tier of service that these comp that these companies need, that these our customers need, we provide them with the options of like, okay, you can go because you need this is what we recommend. Because you need that and that and that, this, these are the, this is the package that we recommend. And this is how much it is for three months, six months, or twelve months. And and then that's you know then, then the agreement comes in, all the good, all the all the paperwork and all the good stuff and everything, all the the fun part. And then we, um, they were off to the races in terms of making sure that they got, they have everything that they need. So, you know, it's, it really is important. Not only when it comes to recruitment, that's very, that's very critical, but retention is, is critical for us as well too, to ensure that, you know, we were able to satisfy your services at the, at the fullest extent or even beyond that as well. 
and we want to see you we want to see you all stay on and you know for a for a great great part of this whole thing they they tend to stay on because of how much what we have to offer is so uh unlike what's out there so it sounds like it's almost built around you know you, you talk about the the time lengths of some of these terms it's built around potentially some of these big consumer spending kind of uh, holidays, right? Like you mentioned Valentine's Day, obviously the, the holidays are coming up in you know, yes. 12 months, right? So you guys have three, six month, 12 month terms. So it does sound like it's almost like a service or, or project-based agreement. Am I, am I tracking that correctly? Uh, you know, it, yeah, I mean, it, it can, it can be looked at that because there are, you know, there are, uh, customers and who use our services, you know, just for a short term, because like what you said right now, like, you know, because they just want to, they want to make sure they are all set and, and geared up for back to school. Um, so they'll probably come on board around around May, April or May or so, use the services for, for you know, for a, um, a half a year or whatever may have you up until the fall. Just this way they can understand, like, you know, like how how things are going to be are going to be competitively, com competitively priced um, when it comes to like, you know, backpacks and rulers and, and, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, so they so that, that can be the case or, you know, when you are moving products, you know, on a consistent basis, like a Best Buy, for example. Um, they, you know, that's going to be all year round because they're, they always have video games. They always have movies, you know, they always have appliances. So, so yeah, so that, um, it really does kind of depend on the, on the, on the, the project and the customer as well. That's super helpful. Yeah. Just was kind of curious to understand a little bit more about kind of the behind the scenes of that. Now going into kind of your role, um, love to just kind of understand from you, like what's the marketing strategy been for like, you know, educating prospective customers? Like what, what approach are you guys taking right now? Absolutely. So when when I came on board with the international marketing team, my objective was I want to take the reputation that NeoGrid has in Brazil, and I want to have that be applied in the United States um, and Europe. And the reason why is because like when you look more, when you look deeper into like into the into the industry, uh, supply chain, the supply chain industry in Brazil, NeoGrid is like, really is a household name. Like you, like their reputation is damn near like Pepsi. You know how it's just like everybody knows it. And that's, that's why that was like my, my immediate focus. And, and what I pride myself in when it comes to, you know, what I do with international, not only are we focused on in terms of, of, you know, getting the brand out there, but also it's really important that we also like showcase that we have, um, we, we, we have a touch with the community, our philanthropic side as well too. You know, we, you know, we, um, we know we participate in, uh, in, in donations every holiday year. We participate in community events as well too around around the Chicagoland area, uh, whether it be you know back to like we had back to, a great back to school drive uh, during the pandemic because you know since we are a, techn a technology company, uh, we were very um, you know we were very cognizant of the fact that you know a lot of these kids who are going to be at home now you know for because you know, they can't go into schools, many of them don't have um, they don't have like you know strong Wi Fi's or even or even cameras for their for their laptops or, their, or even good lighting you know they don't have these variables that really make the uh, the classroom experience, the online classroom experience helpful. So he, you know, with, so I, I was able to, you know, work with the team and organize an event where this way we were able to get, you know, to, to really be able to have students stand out and, um, and give away opportunities for, um, Wi-Fi by working with like the local, local Comcast in the area, uh, the, 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 the cable service, um, also working alongside with, um, with Best Buy, with Office Max, uh, ensuring that, these kids are equipped when it came to equipment because since we are a technology focused company, we wanted to make sure that the you know the that that the tech the, the people who are gonna be working in technology focused companies in the future are well equipped right now in the present. So, you know, like so doing so going about those avenues in terms of showing that not only do we care about like, you know, about retailers and their and their pricing, but we also care about you know, neighborhoods and communities and children as well as, you know, students as well too, who are, who are invested into this area, because let's be honest, tech, tech, not the, the tech field is going to be, you know, that's just going to be a life, you know, as we, as we continue forward, that's going to be life. And these young people right now, they need to be able to be well equipped for that. And that's something that we really uh, take pride in, you know, being able to be a part yeah. of it happen. I love it. I mean, um, you're showing that you and the retailers care about the community and ensuring that uh, you, know, you have these strategic partnerships in place. It sounds like that's that's been a focus for, for you from a marketing perspective. Exactly. Yep. 
Absolutely. You know, like use your relationships that you already have and, you know, be able to grow from that. Like who doesn't want to be involved with being able to help out however they can. So, and then, it, and because we had those, like you said, like we had those relationships already, you know, with, you know, with the Best Buy and, you know, and, and the others, they, you know, they were able to come in, come on board and, you know, be a part of that. So, you know, just we really go to show like, you know, where the heart is. I love it. That's great. Um, you know, from, you know, from our conversations, it sounds like, you know, there's, there's a lot to be potentially celebrating, uh, and what you guys have been doing, like, what is something that, you know, you and the marketing team and, or even like the international kind of global organization, like you guys have talked about, you guys have about 800 or a thousand people at the organization. Like what's something that the company is striving to celebrate maybe like a year from now? Uh, you know what, do you know, obviously, you know, you know, sit, you know, driving sales and making new sales and making, and, and making new contracts. That's, that's always going to be our, uh, that's always going to be our fuel, you know, to keep, keep on going and keep on going forward and, you know, and everything, you know? Um, you know, like, but obviously like, you know, like big numbers of, uh, of course, but me personally, like I, like I said earlier, my objective every day since day one for me in this position is being able to get the reputation of Neo Grid to be as strong in North America as it is in, as it, as it is in Brazil. And I, you know, I push for that every day. And a year from now, you know, like if, you know, when we see some, some significant, uh, strides in that direction. Uh, of of showing the awareness of being able to like you know really pump up the awareness of the of 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 our brand of our company, you know just even if it's just like one giant step in the right direction a year from now, you know I'll be uh, I'll be completely happy and ready to celebrate that because that's a, a step forward to our everlasting goal, for sure. Well, is there anything you know as as we guess wrap this up that um that you'd like to share anything that we haven't touched on, you know, maybe that our listeners would need to know about you or about the company that we haven't covered. Sure. Um, you know, we covered a lot. I felt in today's conversation. Um, I really definitely do, uh, encourage everyone who's watching right now to, you know, check out our website, neogrid.com, N E O G R I D.com. And, uh, from, and then you'll be able to have like a, a very, um, a very firsthand understanding in terms of like, you know, what we're all about, what we're trying to service and what we're, and what our object, our objective is, and that's your satisfaction. So, you know, like really check us out. We're on Instagram as well too. So check us out there on Instagram and YouTube <clears throat> and LinkedIn, especially, um, you know, you'll be able to see like, you know, some interviews I'm, um, I'm myself have, I'm starting a, um, I've started a, um, uh, a series as well too, like an in-house like podcast series called Neil talk that we're going to be rolling out to the public where, you know, it's an opportunity for you to like, you know, be able to understand like, you know, the people who work behind the scenes here, you know, like how, how great of an, how great would it be if you, if you knew like, you know, more about the people who are on the sales teams with Apple or, or, or Microsoft or whatever may have you. So. You know, that's something that's very near and dear, especially to us, because we, you know, we want it, we treat this like a community, like a family. And, you know, we're going to do business together, know who exactly who you're going to be working with. And that's going to be us, you know, so, so be on the lookout for that. But yeah, please go visit the website, neogrid.com. And, you know, we'll be happy to help you out. I love it. I love the plug. And that's awesome. You're, you're starting your own series as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, definitely want to get that out there and help you guys promote that. And uh, cool. we'll look like, yeah, Maurice, I appreciate your time today. I definitely enjoyed our, our conversation. I feel like I've learned a lot about you uh, and, uh, and about the company. And we definitely appreciate you being a part of the Business Ninjas podcast. Max, it's been an honor, man. Thank you so much for having me on. And I uh, I, ho- I look forward to talking to you again in the future, man. You, you bet. Yeah, we'll talk soon again. This is Maurice Profit from NeoGrid signing off. Thanks again for listening, everyone. Take care. Mm-hmm.